on my property. You didn't win shit in my yard. Wait, wait, I win all of you. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. People keep asking me, like, well, Tom, why the hell do you have that intro for your live stream? Because that old man gets me every time. The way he looked at that that creature and just was just perplexed of what the hell is that? I laugh my ass off every time, and it's a little something I do for me. Um, guys, welcome back to this live stream. We are now in June. This has been a crazy, man. We're almost at eight months of doing this, uh, this YouTube podcasting thing, and it's been insane. It's been a lot of fun going and just growing like we have been. Uh, tonight we have a really, really awesome guest. We have uh, we have Jeff back from Shallow Water Fishing Adventures, uh, the, the number one go-to guy for everything Upper Potomac River. Uh, he'll be telling us a little bit of everything, what, what's going on in the river right now, what's biting, where to go. And, and then at the end, we're going to have a little bit of a Q&A with him. So if you guys really want to ask Jeff a specific question, feel free to uh, submit it in the comment section, write me an email or text me. I'll try to get it to Jeff and then we'll finish up uh, at the end of the segment. I'll just give you my top baits to uh, be, I think that you should be throwing right now, or at least I've had success with as well. We'll also hopefully at some point, either this, this week or next week, we're going to have somebody on to talk about the Shenandoah river. And I'm trying to find somebody to have on about the Rappahannock river, but I'm uh, running into some roadblocks there, but we'll do what we can with that. But um, yeah, like we're waiting for a few more people to kind of get into uh, getting into the queue here, and then we'll be bringing Jeff on here shortly. Um, but yeah, I like these Monday things too because I feel like there's a huge opening on Monday evenings to have something like this. Because listen, you want to get away from the wife and kids, and this is a good time to do it. Start drinking; it's Friday somewhere, uh, and just try to relax, unwind, and let us entertain you some. So, without further ado, let's bring him on to the bring him on to the show. The man with the legend, Jeff. How are you doing tonight? Hey, what's going on? I'm doing good, sir. Thank you so much again for coming back on with us. No problem. So, uh, yeah, how's everything been going? How's the guiding been? It's been good. Um, I've been doing a lot of guiding on the Upper Potomac River. Um, uh, a little bit on the Susquehanna, but mostly on the Potomac. Okay. Um, the, uh, the river's been fishing real well. I've been fishing real far north, though, um, on the river. Um, okay. Up north of Harper's Ferry. Uh, up above uh, Dam 4, uh, around Dam 4 and places like that. Um, <clears throat> the water's starting to get real low. You know, so if you're in a boat, use caution <laughs> mm. because uh, the rocks are there and uh, they'll get you if you're not paying attention. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, the, the, water, the water at uh, Edwards Ferry is right around four and a half feet. At that gauge, um, at the um, Point of Rocks gauge is at roughly two and a half. Wow. And then Shepherdstown, uh, West Virginia gauge is right around three. Wow. And uh, those levels are good for a jet boat. Mm -hmm. They're getting a little bit, a little bit um, lower. And even with a jet boat, you're going to have to, uh, you know, use caution. But the, the water clarity, I would say it's stained but there's visibility for several feet. Okay. Um, the water temperature is roughly 75 degrees. Wow. And um, I'm catching fish in the middle of the river on uh, underwater ledges and uh, ledges that you can actually see above water. Okay. So yeah. it, they're, all, they're all on those rocks in the middle of the river. Where are they right now in their cycle? Are they pre-spawn? Are they post-spawn? Are they spawn? I would right say now? they're moving to post-spawn. Moving to post-spawn? Okay. Yeah. Cause yeah, look, looking at your, uh, we, we actually talked the other day guys, uh, just to make sure everything runs good. We give you the best broadcast possible. And just looking at some of these photos, dude, you are catching some sloths right now. My goodness. That one right there. That one right there was 22 and a quarter inches long. Good Lord. That fish was caught on a, <clears throat> on a plastic Cinco. Huh? That's a big one for the Potomac river. And it's really dark. Do they usually get like that when it's spawning? No, they get like that when they're real big. They okay. look like that. That fish, if if that fish hadn't been spawned out, that fish would have weighed well over six pounds. Wow. Dude, that thing is an absolute freaking tank. And also, I, I we got to talk about this before we go anywhere else. Let me see if I, I can find it for <laughs> you. All right. He was telling me this story. 
the floor is yours. Let's talk about this because this thing was absolutely insane. That is a tank. Yeah. So uh, this was a few days ago. We were fishing. Um, we were fishing in the middle of the river. We kind of creeped over towards the Maryland shoreline, and um, we were throwing a plastic, pla uh, you know, small plastic baits, four inch uh, Senkos, and uh, this thing came out of nowhere and grabbed the uh, the bait. We fought it for probably five, six minutes. Um, we caught it on eight pound fluorocarbon, sunline fluorocarbon. Here, I'll that's show you real quick. That's just freaking stupid. I'm not like sponsored by any of these people that you guys might be thinking I am. I this is just stuff I like. So this is this is the stuff I use, fluorocarbon wise. Okay. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. Let me uh, flip the screens real quick. Boom. Yeah. Perfect. That yeah. looks really okay. Yeah. Oh, Sunline. Okay. So you go with FC Sniper Invisible. Okay. Yeah. That stuff. That stuff never let me down. That stuff's awesome. Absolutely awesome stuff. And I usually use eight pound. Sometimes if they're out of it, I get it from Tackle Warehouse. Sometimes if they're out of it, I use seven, but there's a big difference between the seven and the, and the eight. Yeah, that's what you have to do. Yeah. Especially. And then I'll go as high as 10, but most of the time I stick with eight. This fish was, this fish was landed on eight pound line with a uh, 16th ounce. Can, can you, can you see that? Okay. Yeah. A 16th ounce, what they call a slider head. Goodness gracious. I mean, we were bass fishing and how we landed that thing. I don't know. That, that is I, so, um, oh. He, uh, he got it close to the boat and I grabbed it with, um, uh, Boga grips. That thing is a fish and, of a uh, lifetime. And the fact that you caught that on eight pound test is absolutely insane. I mean, yeah. there's so many muskie in this fishery right now. It's unbelievable. And, uh, what was funny is, I mean, he even wrapped around the trolling motor at one point in time. Really? Yeah. I don't yeah. know why you're not sponsored by Sunline because they should be looking out to you because you are a spokesperson. The fact that you were able to hook and bring that thing in, plus it wrapped around the trolling yeah. motor is insane. Yeah, it was. He was he was tangled on the trolling motor, and uh, and so I had to get the trolling motor out of the way, and uh, he stayed on. And what's funny is right when I grabbed him with the boga grips and started lifting him up into the boat, that's when he snapped the line because he went crazy when I uh, when I lifted him up, like mm. he should. Yeah, no, absolutely. And he's thick too. Yeah, that, that fish, I would guess to make that fish is um twenty-five pounds, maybe, maybe bigger. I would guesstimate. Oh yeah, oh all the amount. Like now, did you see him actually take the bait or yes. was it just like a blind? Yeah. Out of just a, a dart, like a a, a a torpedo in the water. Just came up, grabbed it, and then he was on. Mm. He was hooked. He was hooked in the corner of his mouth. Just dumb luck. I mean, I lose most of these fish all mm -hmm. over the river. Most of the time they take my, my expensive lures and stuff. That's freaking, that's, that's insane. I mean, I can just tell by a smile on his face. That's official lifetime. And the fact that you were able to get a hook in him just the right way. So he doesn't tear off. Cause I don't care if you have a hundred, you know, a hundred pound monofilament it might do it. But if you get that thing deep hooked in them with those teeth, you don't have a metal leader, man, they're gone. So no, they is, sure are. That yeah. is freaking awesome. Yeah. So getting back to like getting back to the river right now, um, like generally speaking, what are you seeing right now? Are you seeing a lot of size? Are you seeing just a lot of quantity? Where, where are you? No, where I'm seeing now. I'm, now I'm starting to see uh, smaller fish. Smaller fish. Yeah, because the water's getting warmer. When, when did that start? You think was it a couple of weeks ago that you started to see the? the no, transition? no, that was uh, about a week ago. It was about a week ago. Okay, so it's pretty yeah. recent. Mm -hmm. What do you think happens on this river? Do you think something changes with the big fish, their, their behavior? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the fish are going to go into a post-spawn, and, and they, they kind of get into like a funk. They kind of just, a week or so, just, uh, you know, you're like, where are these fish? And then all of a sudden, you start catching them again. There's a small window that opens up before the water gets, you know, before it gets warm. Mm -hmm. And um, then you're like, oh, there they are. And you know, and, and then you get into a summer pattern. Uh, the, the big fish, no, when the, when the water warms up, I, I think those big fish, m my um, opinion is, I believe they feed at night. Mm, okay. They, they go like, I guess you could use the word nocturnal. I actually, um, I agree with that with smallmouth too. Like they, they probably do switch their feeding behavior up on some of these places. Mm -hmm. So now going from, I mean, let's just start at White's Ferry, and we'll just go all the way up to where you're fishing right now. Um, White's Ferry-wise, you got the main stem of the Upper Potomac before it feeds into 
the the waterfall like what is the fishing like right here now do you fish there a lot um at this this point in the year or is that uh, usually i do okay i found more fish though further north right further now. north and i think that has to do with the spawn and i think we had the perfect storm to where it moved them they okay. traveled um pretty far and i've heard people catching them in the shenandoah pretty well right now mm-hmm. and um just the other day a friend of mine told me they caught 21 fish up in the monocacy oh, wow. on an evening trip him and his father okay. so they were using ned rigs so i think they're um i think they're going to move out of those those areas um and start repopulating the rest of the river okay. it'll be a matter just just a matter of time okay so then, and then moving up, then I guess from there, and then and then for everybody that they're leaving comments up uh, at at the end of this, we're going to do a Q and A. We're just going to go through all your questions at once. Um, so feel free to to leave a comment, leave a message, and then we'll make sure that we Jeff can get can get to answering everybody before before we leave here tonight. So you know, as as they're as they're transferring out of this this spawn habitat, which I, based on starting this podcast and listening to so many professionals, it does seem that smallmouth do move a lot in a river system, and they go from one place to another. Um, whether it's from their wintering holes to the spawning habitat to the summer place, um, do in, in this transitional time, will the fish move into creek um, creeks that reside right next to the river? Let's say the Monocacy, Antietam, or is the major population of them going to go out into the deeper main portion of the river? No, they're going to stay in the main stem of the river. Main stem of the river. You're always going to have fish in the creeks, though. Okay. At some point in time, you know, as okay. the wa- if the water rises, they're going to go into those creeks. Okay. And as the water falls, they leave those creeks. Okay. And then, and then how they, do you, they, and then they oh, go no, back okay. to um, uh, main stem of the river. Gotcha. 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 Do you think the flood, the, all the rain that we've gotten has affected them and how do you think it's affected them? No, I don't think it's affected them because we only had uh, one real, real high um, uh, water event, uh, you know, okay. um, high water event. Yeah. Okay. And then I don't moving, think it's and moving up to uh like just below Harper's Ferry, Brunswick area. What what is the fishing like right there right now, generally speaking? Well, you're going to stick with the uh, the ledges. Ledges. They're, they're on underwater ledges. They're they're on they're on rock. Okay. They're going to be in the, be in the middle of the river. Um, they're also if if you get out early enough in the morning, you can use top water, and you can get them in in calm pools of water. You know, eddies. Just throw out across the uh, uh, the eddy and bring it back through. And, What's uh, your top waters? Uh, this uh, this one right here is one of them. Oh, the okay. The easiest the bait popper. in history to use. I don't think you could fish this thing wrong. The whopper like plopper, but this is that this is that short fat one. Um, the sixty? I think that's a sixty size. Yeah, let me Guys, see this in the comment Hold section. On. Let me know. Is that the sixty size? I'm pretty sure that was a sixty size. He he sent me. That's the whopper plopper seventy five. 75, damn it. Okay. The 75, that 60, the one you're talking about is even smaller, but they do have one. Yeah, I think it's I think it, that one right there. It's a tiny one, yeah. Yeah, it's just like a little thimble thing. Um, yeah, because I, I know like for, for big lakes, I'll use that big-ass musky one for largemouth, but I'm nervous to throw the bigger one for smallmouth. I don't know why. Maybe it's just mental, but I feel like I do have to downsize when I get on the rivers to get bites. I think those smaller ones work better. And then yeah, you have this cool. size right here. Dude, I love your workshop. That is a nice one. What size is this? Is this a 90? Is that what I'm they call say, that one? I'm going to say that's a 90. If you underneath the belly, there actually should be a, uh, it should say something, but that looks like a 90. I don't, I'm not real good at keeping the, the, uh, the, um, yeah, this is a 90. That's the 90. So you get the that, 90 yeah. and the 75. Those are the, my, these are my go to. I have, believe it or not, with this little dingleberry here, I have problems actually getting this thing to to move correctly. And I feel like it's because I'm using too big a line size uh, for this smaller one. But you can also catch bluegill, and you can catch those little rock bass with this thing, which is kind of neat. Uh-huh. Um, now, again, I don't think you try to use this size to win a tournament. But if you got a little kid, you throw this super like peanut version, you might actually uh, they might have some success with some top water too. Well, you know, if um, if they're not hitting the ninety, you go down to the seventy five, and then you can go down to that size you have there. And uh, things might completely change. Yeah, that's moment. true. Do you ever throw a popper or a walking bait on the Yeah, bed? I love poppers. I think poppers, uh, before I started using that whopper plopper, the popper was, uh, that, that sounds funny, but the 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 popper uh, was my go-to. Mm-hmm. And then I used to use a, a prop bait called a Kelly J Jr. 
made by Lucky Craft. Man, I have never. Okay, I need. Do you have one? Can you send me a picture of that if you don't have one right away? I got to. Yeah, that, that I don't have one cool right now lure. in front of me. But the Kelly J has a has. It's a dual prop. It has a has a prop on the front and the back. Oh, and okay, I've caught um, really big fish on that. Okay, like a, I think it's a devil horse. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I know what you're talking about. That sounds. And then, wild. um, and then one that people, and then one that people have gotten away from, and it's the old standby, is the buzz bait. Buzz baits are awesome. I was talking to Travis Luger about that, and it's so weird. I don't remember the last time I threw a buzz bait. And maybe buzz baits are stop, absolute but... killers on smallmouth. They really what? are. Why do you think that is compared to a whopper plopper? I have no idea. Maybe the sound. Okay. Obviously, the sound is different. Um, I mean, they're annoying as can be. So I, I don't know if that really aggravates the fish. Uh -huh. um, I like using black ones, and I use a, a three eighth to a to a half ounce. Oh, okay, man. You go bigger dollar size, and um, man, they so sometimes you can see the. Uh, it's almost like the smallmouth are stalking them. They're underneath. You can see them just before they hit them. Oh man, I miss. I gotta get back in the rotation. Do you use a do you use a stinger hook with them, or do you go with any kind? No, of No, um, I, I would. I, I use I use one of those uh, trailer hooks for uh, spinner baits. Okay, if, finally. Um, Good. If if they swat swatted a spinner bait too many times, I have and I have people on the boat and they keep swatting at them. Mm -hmm. um, I'll switch over to a, a a trailer hook, and uh, it's a done deal after that. They finally got somebody that likes trailer hooks because I yeah. for some reason it's such a split thing. It's like a religion. People either use trailer hooks or don't like to use trailer hooks. No, I like them. I really do. And I don't really think there's much uh on a buzz bait that stops them from grabbing the main hook. But I guess it's the same for a spinner bait too. But I just feel like that buzz bait hook is so much more exposed. Yeah, like, but it's so easy to either put an extra treble hook, uh, treble hook, huh, a trailer hook on your hat or have it around. Like, if you're in a tournament, just to have it just in case, if you're getting short strike, to make sure it's actually a small amount. Oh, yeah. Like you definitely need one if you're uh, if you're fishing for money like that. Yeah. You know, just, on a, yeah. On a, even a local tournament where the uh, money's sitting in a jar, maybe. <laughs> I'd be using a trailer hook. <laughs> so, you know? uh, Getting off the, uh, I guess, the, the top water action and, and moving up. So you're on the ledges for the main stem of the Potomac. Uh, now we get up to Harper's Ferry and then a little bit beyond to where you're at right now. Does, how does the river change topography-wise? Is it basically the same or is it a little bit different? No, it, uh, just around Harper's Ferry, as everyone can imagine, it's, it's, it's white water. Like literally, it's, it's rafting water. And then once you get above that, it's, that's where Dam 3 used to be. That's where that, um, that's where that uh, barge is still. Stuck. Is it still there? Seriously, <laughs> it's still there, stuck, and it's got that excavator on the um on it right now. Oh Apparently, God. they removed the one from Dam Four, and they uh, actually removed the excavator out of the water. Come I don't know how on. that happened, but but yeah. So above Dam Three, then it becomes like a pool of water, like um, almost looks like a lake. Okay. And there's and I'm finding fish in areas like that too. So don't be afraid to fish those real slow moving areas of water. Uh, where did that, they go for it? Oh, uh, wh wherever you, wherever you're finding rock, you'll probably find smallmouth and those real uh, lazy looking um, lake conditions. Okay. So yeah, they are, they do set up in different areas. I, I would imagine in the deeper stuff compared to the, when you get that riffle ledge, riffle ledge type of deal that you get down, mm -hmm. down like, now, do you yep. fish at all? Do you dump the boat in at all around Dam 4, Dam 5? Yeah, I do. What is, and, what uh, is this like there? It's um, it's pretty easy boating. There's a few spots like around uh, um, Shepherdstown you got to watch out for. But if you're in a jet boat, you'll see those uh, the chutes that you can go through. Mm -hmm. um, and you just want to stay up on plane to get through those places. And then um, you go up past Shepherdstown and there's, there's quite a bit of like dead water almost where it, it would be really hard to find the fish. Mm -hmm. And there's really nothing that's telling you the fish are there. There's no like um, small islands, you know, um, scrub islands. There's no uh, rapids or really no rock really showing in the middle of the river. Um, the further up you go towards Dam 4, the faster the water gets though. Okay. Yeah. What, but, what, is um, tail, what is a tail race like? Have you actually fished a tail race at all? Um, Not this year, no. 
what are you looking for right now? Is there something in particular that you're looking for? Not just not just in that area, but generally in the river right now. You said you're looking for that that those shelves. Yeah, those shelves. There's rock rock ledges, underwater okay. ones, in the mi- middle of the river, or where um, where you see rapids, like where you'll see white water or rapids. If you back off back off of them fifty to hundred yards, and start looking for uh, ledges, rock okay. ledges or rock shelves. And you'll find fish. And right now they're scattered though. They're scattered all over the river. Is that because they're just coming out of the spawn funk? Yeah. Yep. How right now, how long do you generally give a spot before you bounce? If you're looking for the quality, you know, the bigger fish, are you, are you milking an area? Are you running and gunning a couple casting? No, I just, I, I, a lot of times, cause I'm on a clock, you know, I'm, I'm running and gunning most of the time. So if we pull up to a spot, it depends on how big the uh, the area is I want to fish. But usually there's a, you know, concentrated area I want to fish. Um, so if there's if there's two people in the boat, and if, if I'm fishing and there's two people in the boat, I don't know, maybe we throw six times each, mm-hmm. cast out six times each, and if we don't catch anything, we'll probably move. Okay. I mean, if the smallmouth are there, they're there. They're there. I feel yeah. like. And um, sure, if you sat there for an hour, could you catch something? Yeah, but but you're you're killing time. Because mm-hmm. you could go to the next hole and catch five fish. You know? Yeah, that, that's the thing about rivers. It's so weird to me, like, like how much time do you actually give it? And I really do think for the people that are listening, it is dependent on the time of year. I mean, it's one thing if it's the middle of winter and you want to grind through a spot to make sure they're there. But I, I, I do kind of agree with you, Jeff, that like you got to, you got to cover water and they're, if they're going to eat, they're going to eat. And until you get clues, don't just settle into a spot. And you can come, you can go back to those spots too, especially if you're in a jet boat, you can go back to them. Cause I've, I've fished areas where they're, where I haven't caught anything. And we've gone back a couple hours later and we've caught like two fish, three fish okay. in a spot. So that kind of, kind of almost tells you that, they might move that much, you know, oh, hop back I, and forth from spot to spot. No, I, you know? I 100% agree with that. I think they, I think they move a lot, especially this time of year when you're going from pre-spawn to spawn to post-spawn, trying to get into the summer habitats. Um, and, and then, you know, look, looking at your, in your Facebook page guys, and, and please, uh, if you haven't already, please go like, like, and like to his uh, Facebook channel, like it, book a trip with this guy. He's a fantastic guide. Uh, but also just to take a look at some of the fish that he's catching besides it's, you know, world world-class musky or some big ass big ass donkey smallmouth. i mean he's he's doing <laughs> really well right now um yeah what besides top what are you using in general this time of year what what changes between now and let's say april well the water warms up and i feel like once it gets above 70 degrees they really change their um uh i think they start looking up a lot okay you know they'll eat they'll eat at the surface um, it's funny cause it's, it's like, it's in reverse in the, um, so when they come out of the winter time, I'm talking about the Potomac river, not, not any other river, the upper Potomac, it's almost like the, the upper Potomac fish have a really hard time transitioning from winter into spring into summer. And, but once they get into summer, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're great, but they have no problem transitioning from summer to fall to like late fall and winter mm-hmm. and you can throw top water i've caught them at 55 degrees in top water in the, in the fall late wow fall. wow but um so the other baits i'm you asked what other baits am i using besides top water mm-hmm. i'm using these um uh, i'm using ned rigs so for whoever doesn't know if you live under a rock inch, <laughs> these two and three quarter inch uh um plastics uh you know you can use them with an exposed hook or a uh these are the ones i make you can use them with exposed hooks or um there's a new jig head out it's a midwest finesse jig jig head huh. and uh i use those as well and, and it create it makes them become uh like weedless oh that's a good idea so i use those and i use uh, i stick to a to a brown a green pumpkin or or a black okay yeah, yeah the darker colors men. work better for me too. What'd you say? I said the darker colors work better for me too, like you said, and like then the blacks and everything. I'm using these two. 
all these baits I'm showing you, I, I have, I have molds for them. I make them. And then I'm using these little, uh, these little swim baits, the three inch swim baits. Nice. I use those too. I use those on a ball head jig. Okay. Uh, you could put them on a slider head too, if you wanted to, but I like using them on a ball head jig and, um, you can fish them on the bottom like a tube or you can just swim them through the water. And then I also use, uh, the last one I like using a lot is the, uh, is a stick bait right here. Some people call it a Cinco. Hmm. It's a three inch. A three for, inch or a four. For the Cinco and, and the swim bait, what, what is the tackle setup that you're fishing that on? I'm using a um, medium light rod. It's pro, um, r- roughly seven feet long. Okay. Fast action on them. And then... I'm using a 1000 series reel. That's what I, that's what we caught that musky on is a 1000 series reel from Shimano. So, you know, it's good. Um, yeah, you know, anyone that doesn't think those 1000 series reels can catch big fish or thinks they're, think they're too small. They're, they're not, they just caught that musky and I've caught other musky throughout the years like that Dude. and caught <laughs> carp like that in the summertime, caught carp that are, I don't know, 20 pounds. Um, cause they, you know, they pick these plastic baits up by accident mm-hmm. and then, and they just take off like a freight train. Ah, that's and, so cool. Um, you have to chase them with your, with your boat usually, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, a carp cause they just keep peeling line and peeling line. Dude, that but, is um, an underrated sports fish. Cause if you hook into a big carp, man, goodness, it'll take you for a run. Oh yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So I use that 1000 series reel. Um, I won't go any higher than a 2,500 okay. fishing out there. I have 2000 series reels right now that I'm throwing spinner baits and stuff on. Gotcha. And I use, um, I use for those, I use uh, medium rods. And then eight pound test for everything. It. No, no. The, I use a um, uh, braided line. I like the gamma. If anyone uh, wants to know the brand, I'm not sponsored by any of these people. I, I make my own stuff <laughs> and uh, the stuff that I use. Um, I just like it. Gamma okay. fishing line. Does, uh, I don't know if a lot of people know about them. They're from, they're in Pennsylvania. You can find them on Tackle Warehouse. Here, I got a box of it. People have probably seen this stuff before and be like, what is that? And just pass by it. But this is really good fishing line. They make really good, uh, if I can't buy that Sunline brand of fluorocarbon, I buy their fluorocarbon. Okay. But this is the braid. And I'm using the braid is usually um, 20 to 30 pound braid. And the reason why I go so high is it doesn't tangle up on people. Smart. That's really smart. It doesn't tangle, but it would be nice to use 15, but it does. It likes to knot up. And then yeah. The, yeah. the floor carbon I use, like I showed you earlier is eight pounds, anywhere between six to 10 pound line, but I like eight pound. So w- with that said, I think, wh- why do you pick the smaller Senko or the smaller stick bait compared to the ter- you know, stereotypical five, six inch? Because that's what they like. They don't like those big baits. Mm. Sure, you could probably catch them. And you probably catch them on a good day where they're, where they're grabbing all kinds of stuff. But they like those small baits. Smallmouth likes small baits. Okay. Uh, anything four inches or below. But I mean, for makes common, it makes sense. <laughs> but for tubes, I don't go any higher. I don't go any bigger than two and three quarter inch. Okay. And then a Ned rig isn't a Ned rig unless I le- at least in my mind, unless it's two and three quarter inches. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't get much I, smaller than that. No, nah, it's so crazy because yeah, you you can eat, whether you're fishing here the Susky or the St. Lawrence River, Lake Champlain, pretty much all those baits will play. Like it's not that much different. Yeah. Well, some of those places probably they get away with bigger baits. Uh, you could probably you can get away with throwing a four inch bait on the Susquehanna and probably catch fish, but I, I think these three inch baits and two and three quarter inch baits they're going to catch all the fish. You know, they're going to catch small fish and big fish. For some reason, people have this this idea that that small baits don't catch big fish. They mm-hmm. catch big fish. They catch giant smallmouth. So I, I don't know if the if those if these small plastic baits fool them better. I have no idea. 
I, I think it's, it's their use. It's what they're used to eating, whether it's like mad toms, minnows, crayfish. Yeah. Um, I mean, heck, I, I mean, not to pivot a little bit, but fish in the Susky. Um, w- what is that like right now for, for, for the amount of times you've been up there? I know you've been primarily the Potomac. Is that uh, it's been good. The last time I was up there, it, it fished well. Uh, we fished, uh, that the spawn was about over with, but I was catching them in eddies, shoreline okay. eddies and behind large, uh, like current breaks, big, big rock piles and stuff like that. And you're catching them on grass, grass, uh, grass islands and stuff. And I was just using plastics hmm. and, um, tubes and everything I showed you right there. And that's, that's what they were hitting. How different is the Susquehanna to the upper Potomac? I mean, being able, having to guide both do, does it fish the same or is it completely like you just throw out, if you're on the Potomac river one day and you're on the Susky, you, your mindset's completely different. Or is it no, the, the um, the Susquehanna, um, is a lot more that the river's a lot more dynamic, the bottom of it and everything. There's big rocks, a lot, you know, the rocks are bigger. Mm-hmm. The water's, I, I believe the water's moving probably two times faster than the Potomac at any given time. Okay. I mean, the water's just, just cooking down the river. And, um, you know, the, those fish seem to be, man, that they seem to be so aggressive. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word easy to catch them because no, you can get up there and they can hand you your butt to you, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, they, um, that they, they seem to be a lot more, um, accepting to a lot more different plastics. You know, I've, I've heard of people using six inch trick worms up there and catching them. Holy God. So. I, I feel like it's just the forage species too. I, I, I watching, learning more and more about bass biology it really i think it depends on what they're eating that's why you can see down at like in texas where they're eating like 12 12 inch gizzard shad they'll, they'll hit some crazy large things yeah and i feel like they just get so hyper focused on what they should be eating um but you yeah. can take whatever you're fishing on the upper potomac you could take that to the susquehanna and you could be successful you know what what spinner baits? You mentioned spinner baits. Uh, is that generally a springtime thing? Or are you going to be throwing that in the summertime as we as we? No, I'll throw summer? it. Um, I'll throw it anytime. The, the okay. times I like to throw it though is when the water's high, when the okay. water's uh, came up, or when the uh, when the waters come up uh, uh, come up quite a bit, and the water's um, borderline dirty. Um, I've caught them in. I've caught the smallmouth in the summertime with spinner baits and just straight brown water too. Wow. And I'm using um, willow leaf blades if the water's not that dirty. And I like using the uh, Colorado blades. They call okay. them what they call them, turtleback too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just Indian consider blades, them, something like that. I use them. I call them just uh, Colorado blades. And um, I use those because I think they thump a lot better in, in um, dirty water. And I'm using a three-eighth to a half ounce spinnerbait. That's a power move for people that want to fish the river is you got to go heavier with that blade with the current and stuff. You can't go generally speaking with the super light spinner baits and still have the same. Success. No. Yeah. You want to use three eighth to, um, to a half ounce. And you know, if, if you, if, if you're having trouble getting that, even if the water's dirty or if you're having trouble getting that, that spinner bait through the swift water, like if you're on the Susquehanna or somewhere on the Potomac, switch over to those, uh, willow leaf bladed, uh, spinners okay. and make sure you have a real heavy one so that you can stay in the water column and you're not getting washed washed out I, I growing up i usually just fish the swim baits but i have been turned on this past year or two into throwing the spinner bait more i i completely i did i overlooked how good a spinner bait is for smallmouth the spinner bait absolutely absolutely hammers them on the susquehanna really yeah whenever whenever the conditions are are, are right for them Mm-hmm. I mean, they're just, they're just nailing them left and right. So, mm. um, but I like using them. I don't like using them when you have normal, uh, normal water levels and stuff. Now I have tried using them early in the morning and I've been successful, but the minute okay. the sun comes up, if the water's clear, I just stay away from them because I, I, I don't feel like they produce uh, very many fish at all. That's a really, really good, that's a really good point that you just made there. Like a, as we get into, into mid June and the closer the dog days of summer, how much does the sunlight affect them? And what I mean by that is if the sun gets up, are you going to stop with your moving baits and go straight to bottom bumping or can you yeah. still have a moving bait bite? Okay. I'll go, I'll go to plastics. 
You go to plastics. You know, when we can't forget crankbaits and um, chatterbaits. Chatterbaits were awesome this spring Hmm. on both rivers. Really? But we had higher than normal water too. You know, the the water level was was up because it's springtime. Okay. And it seemed to me that they keyed in on the chatterbait more than they did the spinnerbait. That's so weird. I feel like it's so hard to pick between a spinnerbait and a chatterbait. And um, I I'm, I guess I'm a believer now after seeing what I've seen this year. Uh, obviously, the chatterbait makes a different noise in the water, mm-hmm. a lot different, and they key in on that more than they would the spinnerbait because that chatterbait was out fishing the spinnerbait. Really? Yeah. Huh. So, guys, that's good to keep in mind that when you go out there, if whether it's a kayak or your jet boat or just waiting, have both in the box. Have a chatterbait and a spinnerbait ready to go because you never know which one they're going to key in on. And, and the brand, the brand spinnerbait I've been using are those Z-Man Elites. There's a bunch mm-hmm. of different uh, models, and uh, but I use a Z-Man Elite. It's not okay. terribly too expensive, but it's not the cheapest. It's okay. not the jackhammer. It's not fifteen to twenty dollars. Dude, like I get it. It's it works, but goodness gracious, especially if you're a guide, like that's a lot of money to go through. For yeah, well, the, uh, the yeah, the chatterbaits they snag up a lot easier than a spinnerbait. Yes, I mean yes, I've seen agree. spinnerbaits get into some stuff, and I'm like, man, that's not coming out. No, and it comes yeah. right out. So no, you you got to have both on your boat, and it's just to be able to mix and match. And then plus, like you said, they can be. They can be very snaggy uh, unless you get one with a, a weed guard, which I know some people have different vibes on that. Um, you guys are actually absolutely killing it with the comment section. So what we're going to do is we're going to just start doing some of the questions now before this gets out of hand, because you guys are just pumping some <laughs> questions. So uh, we'll go with this one first from JL Scott Fishing and Eat. Do you think the Jeff, do you think the flood stage events moved a lot of fish? A lot more bites below old dam two. Um, so I guess he's saying due to the flood stage, he's getting a lot more bites below dam two. Is there is a he, correlation? Is he still on there? Did he uh, just leave that message? He just left that message, but he could be coming on again. Yeah, is and he talking about there. near Violet's Lock and um Yes, he is and Pennyfield? Yes. Yeah, they probably did move down there. Okay. And they've and they've moved. Uh, there's certain parts of the river where where it really fished well last year, where it's like a uh, it's like the Dead Sea, <laughs> and that's just because of the uh, the movement. That's not because the water's polluted. It's not because um, of some, you know, something unnatural happening. They just move. Okay. Yeah, and then he also just came back with. We got, oh my God, you guys, I love it, guys. Thank you so much for all the communication. Love this. Yeah. Swain's, so I'm sorry, Swain's Lock. Yep. I said Penny, Penny Swain. What else did I say? You said uh, Penny. Violets uh, and Swain's. Yeah, okay. There's Swain, three down yeah. there. Yeah. And then we also have, let me get back up to the top, guys. That way I can kind of remember my place. Do, 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 do. Yep. Matt, Matt Chap with uh, 110. The, the one. The 110 works great. Whopper Plopper on the Susquehanna. And we got DC Metro Angler saying, What's up, fellas? And then we got, let's see what the next one here is. DC Metro Angler saying, I like the, the PIC braid. Yeah, I've never used that braid. Before. No, neither have I. And we got, let's see, JL, Scott Fishing and Eat says, one fourth ounce hair jig. I Okay, I've heard of people kicking ass on a hair jig, and it's weird. Yeah. My brother's had success with a hair jig. I've never had success with it, and I don't know if I'm just not confident yet in it to throw it. Yeah, um, I'm not... Um... I have them. I use them, but that's probably a, a bait that I'm not super confident with. Is it, is um, it just and, a you know, timing deal? Yeah, I, th- I think it works real well in uh, real cold water. Okay. But, um, you know, you, you have to, and, and you know, as, as you learn more and more about fishing, the more well-rounded you are, mm-hmm. it seems like uh, the uh, better your uh, days out on the water can be. Yeah. And, and then I, JL, I really think uh, also with my limited knowledge and just me just kind of being a student of the sport, it's also something where you have to have gin clear water because that doesn't have a lot of movement to it. It's really about yeah. them seeing it. So I think you got to make bomb cast and slow reel it. Um, Here's Char- let, let them see this real quick. This is that. Yeah, go for that's it. a chatterbait, the elite, that elite chatterbait. So everyone okay. can see it. Which is so way cheaper than that in any camera. sporting shop. 
which is also good because I'm I don't know if I'm right. Let me know in the comment section down below, guys. You probably know this too. Does Dick Sporting Goods sell the jackhammer? I don't think it does. Does it? I don't know. I don't even look for them because I know they're so expensive. I just pick up the Chatterbait Elites. DC Metro Angler, what trailer? So I believe DC, you're, you're talking about what trailer on the spinner baits, right? Um, I believe the answer to that is we go with a stinger hook. The stinger hook? Oh, but the trailer, is he talking about a trailer like a, a plastic bait? Yeah. Yeah, let I'm me let me sure. pull one out. I'm looking for one here. And guys, again, just let me know in the comment section. You got a question for, for Jeff. We'll make sure we get that answer tonight. I like using those um those uh, uh, stuff like this, these four inch Kitex, stuff like that. Ooh, I love that. As a as a trailer, trailer or a bait trailer. But I don't use a bait trailer on spinner baits. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I just don't. But on a um a chatterbait, I do. Uh, yeah, yeah. And now, do you do anything different with your chatterbait trailers? You just thread it on there. Do you, does it? Do you have any kind of special tricks for it? No, I just thread it on there. And it's Good it's stuff. more than likely going to be just a swim but swim bait. Okay. Good stuff. Let's see. Travis. Uh good evening from Lake Moomaw. Dude, you are my spirit animal. I wish I was out there at Lake Moomaw with you. That place can be absolutely sick. Um, Where is that place? Uh it is down 81. It is it's I think it's the Jackson River that's dammed up, if my memory serves me right. But they had a Guys, will let me know in the comment section if I'm wrong here. I think it was an over 23 pound bag that was weighed out of there. Of I think it was just smallmouth or a mix, but it was an absolute mammoth bag that they're pumping out there. And it's just the right place, right time. I think it's finally just showing out because it doesn't get a lot of pressure. I think it's only 2,000 acres, maybe 3,000. It's a small lake, but it's deep and clear. Let's see. JL Scott again. Do you like the stainless steel or copper blades on your chatterbait? Um, I really haven't seen, I've never really paid attention to, uh, which ones seem to produce better than the other. I'm just going with, you know, the color and the size, but okay. what, what, what do I prefer? I just prefer the silver ones, the silver stainless ones? steel, not because I think they're better. I just prefer them. Let's see. And then, yeah. And then he sort of said, yep, that's what he meant. Cool. And then let's see back to DC Metro angler. When do you use curly tails? I think he means curly tail grubs or do you ever use curly tail grubs? Curly tail grubs. I would use them in the summertime and I would fish them like, um, uh, like tubes. Okay. Just put them on a jig head and bounce them off the bottom, swim them a little bit, let them fall again, swim them, let them fall. Or you could swim them real slow and just bump them off the bottom. So it, it's so hard because there's so many baits and you can only have one rod and reel in your hand. And I think that's one I suffer this yeah. one too with the, the thousands of dollars of tackle I have because uh, I have an addiction. You just you buy everything, but then you realize when you get to the water, it's like crap. I literally cannot throw everything I own. And so how do you narrow it down? And with the curly tail grub, I think that's why I stopped using it is because. We have the Ned rig. You have the tube. You have all these other baits. That seem you have the swim effective. bait with the boot tail. Yeah, you have the swim bait. And and honestly, before swim baits were a thing, that's what I used to do was use a curly tail grub as a swim bait until they started to make the Kitex that are smaller. Yeah. Um, the, so uh, the grub, the grub was a go-to on the Upper Potomac for years. What colors did you use? For years. Before? You can get them. You can get them. Um, you can get them for dirt cheap now. Grubs. Mm -hmm buy them in bulk compared to From like a... Bart, uh, Barlow's tackle. Okay. Man's neck craft places like that. Mm -hmm. And I would stick to stuff that's under, you know, three inches or smaller. Let's go. Let's see. Roger. Roger Merritt says, yes, the Hagerstown, I believe he says, yes, the Hagerstown uh, sporting goods store does have jackhammers. Okay. That's good to know. I didn't think Dick sporting goods had them. I wonder if it's just situational. Uh, let's see on the hair jig, let's see DC Metro angler. So on the hair jig, I'm assuming that connected to your other question about trailers too. Uh, usually I think with hair jigs, generally speaking, you, if you're swimming the hair jig, you don't have a trailer. I don't know about using the hair jig as a regular jig. Um, if you use it, what type of trailer you use, I'm assuming you just pare it down because it's smaller. 
Let's see. You know, you can also, um, a lot of people don't, um, you can buy small swim jigs, not just, I'm not hair jigs, but swim jigs. Mm -hmm. Like people use swim jigs for largemouth. You yeah. Can, you, you can use smaller ones and swim them in the water for smallmouth. Really? Hit those. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, you can, I think, uh, shoot, what is it? Missile baits. Missile baits actually makes a mini swim jig. Yeah. But, yep. okay. My goodness. You guys are just pumping out the questions. Uh, I don't even know how the hell to say your name. So we'll go, oh, oh, ah, zing, ah, zing, whatever. It says, we need my wife here. She actually pronounces stuff on our other channel. So, ah, zing, have you guys fished Little Pool? What do you guys, do you have any luck throwing there? So I have a great uh, little pool video from last year. It's a Hidden Gems episode where I took a kayak out there. I actually caught a massive pickerel. Um, I prefer when the grass gets thick there, I go with a swim jig, a smaller one. Dirty jigs is my favorite, bluegill colored with a rage tail. Then I also go with a speed worm, like a zoom speed worm, green pumpkin with a dyed uh, tip on the tail. Those would be my two primary baits. And then I would, I would back that up with... Um, a frog or a fluke, something like that, that you can work over that tall vegetation. But those would be my three baits that you could throw there and you could have really good luck, not only with bass, but there's a massive pickerel population there. And honestly, I would bet that the state record pickerel could probably come out of little pool. But that's a great question. Um, let's see. We got, a, we got one more and then we'll get back on topic here. Um, Thomas, I pour those brother. Uh, one point. Yeah. I, you probably do. You probably pour everything, bud. Trailer for the jigs. Okay. For the hair jigs. Gotcha. 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 So you're just doing a little business in the comment section. I love it. Yeah, I've never thrown hair jigs just on the bottom. I usually, if I'm going to throw a jig, I just throw a jig. Again, these are things that I've started this podcast and you talk to people. It's like, that's something else I need to add to my repertoire. And then the last one, so we're all caught up in this, we can move back, is Roger Merritt says, I saw a couple guys smashing smallies on Helgramites, a number six hook below Dam 4 last year, standing in the middle of the river. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Helgramite, uh, plastic, those plastic Helgramite baits work really good. I have a mold for those too. They work. Um, I have a, it's a generic mold. It's, it's one that, um, you probably see other people selling and, um, it's just, a, it's a good bait. Uh, they crush the small mouth when, in the summertime, when the water why, gets though? warm. I've never understood. Why. I, I don't know. I, I don't, um, <laughs> obviously it has something to do with those Helgramites, uh, must, uh, must move around a lot more in that warmer water, but they just love them. They love the little, the little uh, legs on them and everything. Here, I'll, yeah. I'll show them. Let me show something. While, while he grabs those there. Oh yeah. While he grabs it there, Creek fishing adventure talked about that a lot too. Um, about yeah. So these people, my... people have probably seen these before oh, and wow. different. Um, I call it a Helgramite, but okay, it has yeah, a yeah. you know, some people call them um, Helgrapede or something like that or something, mm -hmm. something to that effect. But the, this is what I have. And I put a slider head on it, that 16th ounce slider head. Okay. And this thing just, they absolutely annihilate this thing when they hit it. They, how, they take your line tight, like immediately. How do you work that thing? Do you even work it? Is it like a sick, a Cinco where you just like. Yeah, you just work it? it like a Cinco. You just throw in the water and let it sink. You got to give it time. And it's, it's got a flat, it's got a flat, see how flat it is. There's not mm -hmm. much meat on it, but the hmm. cool thing about this bait is once you tear it up on the one side that you've hooked it, rigged it with. You can flip it around and use oh, it yeah. again. That'd be actually, yeah, I like that idea. Huh. So these are, these absolutely destroy the smallmouth on the upper Potomac River and the Susquehanna. I'm going to have to start throwing those again. I know it's so weird. Like uh, since doing this, I was like, oh, I remember the curly tail grub. Well, shit, I remember the Helgamite. It's so weird. Like yeah. the older I get, the more I forget about stuff I used to throw. <laughs> Like, so I guess now that we're all caught up on that, getting back to it, like um, we mentioned the Monocacy River, like, are, are you fishing that a lot lately? What's the vibe with that place? I, I believe you once said there's good largemouth there too, right? In the yeah. Um, occasionally you'll catch, uh, you'll catch some surprisingly really big largemouth in there. Um, I don't know where they go when um, I, I find them when the water's high. They, it's, it's almost like they, they gravitate towards the Monocacy. They'll be around the aqueduct and stuff like that. Um, but no, the, the, um, from what I understand the, uh, I caught a few of them today up in the Monocacy. I went out of the, uh, Monocacy boat ramp okay, and there was a few fish up there. Not many, but just a few, the water's so low. I was more worried about getting my boat through the water than I was even fishing. If that does anything. 
That is crazy because it feels like just yesterday. I remember heck the last time we actually we met and talked, it was like when it pissed so much rain. You could you, that's when the barges, I think, actually happened. Yeah. Um, that's crazy how much the water's gone down. So what is the clarity like right now in the river in general? Uh, on the on the Monocacy? Yeah, on the Monocacy, and then we'll go yeah, and then we'll it, talk about that for time. It's it's clear. It's clear. Water looks pretty it looks really good. Okay. I think it looks better in Potomac. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. And for you guys that are fishing like the kayak tournament uh, in a week and a half, I do not know if the Monocacy is up or not, or like it's legal to fish that. So probably need to check with the rules and regulations just to make sure. But I know uh, JL is actually in the comment section, so he'll let us all know if it's legal to fish the Monocacy or the, not. The Monocacy um, right now is at um, – so at this water level, if you go out of the um, – if you go out of the mouth of Monocacy boat ramp, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's pushing, right? It, it's like 2.1. That's low. Um, I got my boat all the way up to 28 today. 28. Wow. Yeah. About 28. And, um, I was zigging and zagging through the water to get up through there. I mean, there was one spot that I, I was sure I was going to, uh, it was a, it was a sandy bottom. So I didn't care. I just went over it. Uh -huh. And um, I went right through it, but uh, it was just inches of water. Oh my god! I want to get a jet boat so bad. Yeah, I want to win the lottery so I can have one of each. That's exactly what I need to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, that would be nice to be able to switch back and forth from one boat to the other. Oh man, I tell you, like I like having my bigger boat, but then I keep like I live like five minutes from Williamsport. I even less. I could probably walk there. And like, oh my god, I, I love having a kayak, but I would love to have a jet boat just to be able to scoot up. I'd to love to guy out of a pontoon boat. <laughs> that would actually be pretty dope. That'd be a hell of a way to get on a plane, though. <laughs> How's the crappie out of a pontoon there? boat in a, in a lake? Yes, yes. And cook, and cook for the people while uh, uh, while I'm guiding. There you go. You can do it. You can do a catch and cook. Yeah. Um, cook, uh, cook hamburgers and hot dogs for them. So let's see. Uh, so let's see. JL also said uh, the aqueduct is low. Low. I went there the other day. I'm assuming. And then JL also said the trib should be in play, but always need to check. So guys, again, if you're fishing the NVKBA uh, kayak tournament in two weeks, just check the rules and regulations about any of the tributary creeks. And again, the cutoff is Harper's Ferry. You can't fish above Harper's Ferry, um, which means, you know, dam four or five, all that stuff is off limits for this time. But there's still a lot of river to fish if you're going to fish the uh, upper Potomac. Um, m m segueing on, what, what is the water clarity like right now in the upper Potomac? Is it starting to get back to that, that summertime gin clear? No, it's, it's, it's stained. It's, it's stained. um, yeah. Um, the further North you go though, up above Harps Ferry, it gets, it gets a lot. The water clarity is better. The water clarity is better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I, it has to be because of the Shenandoah. Honestly, that's probably what's starting to like dirty it up. Some. Something's influencing, influencing the, uh, the color of the water. But, um, it seems like once you get above Harper's Ferry, you don't contend with as much, um, muddy water unless there's real heavy rains because there's not really that many, um large tributaries anymore because you have the monocacy you have the uh Sh or shenandoah but you know below harper's ferry and then you have some creeks like kentucky creek i mean that'll mm. push out some serious mud really yeah what about goose creek does that affect it very goose much? creek will push out some serious mud yeah, because of yeah. all that development there. I remember back in the day that Goose Creek used to be a good player, and I don't know what it's been like recently for smallmouth. But Goose Creek's just... a good place to fish. But again, you have to have the right conditions in there. To, to uh, This past um, fall, uh, when I was running trips out of Edwards Ferry, we would go over there just at the mouth of Goose Creek, mm -hmm. and there was this tree that had fallen down, and there's just a bunch of debris around it. And that place was good for, in the first hour, at least – a dozen large mouth before we went to anywhere else on the river. That is so cool. Yeah. With, with tubes, tubes and Ned rigs. How's the crowd? Large the, the largest we, we saw in there was about three and a half pounds. That's a decent large mouth for the river. Yeah. That's pretty good. But that, that was a, that there was only one that big. The rest of I them know. were um, a little bit smaller, but they're, they're fun to catch. Speaking of that, like how, how's the crappie fishing been this, this year? Have you been I haven't, I haven't gotten into any crappie yet. Because I've been bass fishing. Okay. Um, eventually, I'll run into a couple schools. I'm, I believe uh, there'll be some schools down below White's Ferry. White's Ferry. Where they always are every every summer. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. There's always a few schools down there on on these uh, um, brush piles. On gotcha, the gotcha. 
So guys, yeah, make sure since we're, we'll be wrapping up here shortly, if you have any more questions for Jeff, please let him know in the comment section. Um, it looks like we do have one from, from JL. Let's see, uh, oh, wrong one. Let's see where it is. Roger Merritt, what site do you use for the river info? Roger, could you be more specific? What do you mean by that? Like hey, there's, Google? there's two sites. It's through the National Weather Service, NOAA. Okay. There's that one. And you would just have to uh, Google it to get the, uh, the link. And then there's a new one. Um, let me see here. Let me pull this up. This uh, site is showing it's a USGS. It's okay. for the point, it's for point of rocks. This shows you the gauge height, uh, the cubic feet per second, the pH of the water, the temperature, and you know, Fahrenheit and Celsius. And it also shows you the turbidity of the water, it shows you the clarity of the water. Oh, that's so cool. And it's all at uh, point of rocks. And that one, uh, the uh, the site that it's it's showing is at water data dot usgs dot gov that's what it shows up up top roger there you have, have it i have it saved so i i don't know any more than that someone someone sent me the link okay well yeah roger there you go there you go the question and then we got a dc metro angler i feel like i need to give you a gift basket for all the questions that you've asked uh how often do you use those slider heads i use them i use the i buy them by the by uh bulk the bulk packs but they're 18 in each pack i use them all summer long i use hundreds okay. of them why do you like to go with that versus like a texas rig carolina rig drop shot you know i they just work they they Can't always have they just, yeah, there you go. they just work i mean they're uh they're they're cool jig heads i really need they're that. they're uh easy to, oh and the kind that i use there's a whole bunch of different slider heads and the kind that I I use and I showed you on the uh, camera, uh, the kind I use are are light gauge. the The wire is is a light gauge wire. It's it's real thin. Hmm. And this is a sixteenth ounce. Okay. And these are called these are slider head. These are sixteenth ounce slider heads, and they're um, and on the pack they say spider on them. They're the spider hooks. That's okay. what they're called. Huh. That's what I like using. Now, do you touch that with super glue at all to keep it on there? Your base no. on there? Okay. I have I have before if, if uh I've got some glue and um and I'm getting low on plastics. <laughs> I'll just keep uh gluing on there until you just can't do it anymore. DC, thank you. That's a great question. And then Roger, uh Roger Merritt, thank you so much. Yeah, that was a great question too. Um yeah, I mean Jeff, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Have I missed is, missed anything? Have we covered it all? What else is on there? No, that's it. Um, other than uh, I'll have a, um, well, the, the size hooks that I'm using, I'm using number one hooks, number two hooks, one odd and two odd hooks to catch these fish right now um, on the jig heads. And then um, the, the weight that I'm using is a 16th to eighth ounce. That's all I'm using right now. Okay. Uh, cool. The plastics give it a little bit more weight. Um, but in the, in the future, this summer, I'll have a, uh, my website up, uh, that any, everything on it, it's not my guide site. It's, it's going to be a, um, online store and, uh, it's called, it's going to be F SWFA bait tackle.com, but it's not up and uh, running yet. It will be in a, in a few weeks. And when that's, and that's up just, and running guys, we're going to link it here at fishing the DMV social media. That's going to have everything I use. It'll be, it'll have the baits that I use that I make. Okay. And then it will also, and the jig heads that I make, and it'll also have name brand stuff though. Good. You know, your, uh, the, uh, Rapala and stuff like that. Watch stuff out. That Bass like Pro Shop. Huh? New game. In, I said, watch out Bass Pro Shop. We got oh a new God. game in town. <laughs> yeah. No, um, it's just, uh, I want to be able to offer the stuff that I use. Okay. And I'm going to try to stick with just strictly the stuff I use. Like the rods. It'll be just rods that I use. They're not going to be um, astronomical uh, priced rods that are nice, but I just don't use them on my guide service because they're just, if they break, they're just too expensive to replace constantly. Mm -hmm. And that's the hardest thing with being a guide is it is you have to budget everything. You have to budget every piece yeah. of gear you buy. 
Yeah, I'll sell, you know, these these top water baits like this. I'll sell stuff like that. Awesome. But yeah, guys, yeah. G give Jeff a round of applause. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on again. I really appreciate it. Again, when this episode, guys, re gets re-uploaded tomorrow morning with the podcast version as well, link in the episode description to his Facebook page, his social media handles, and also his website. So you can book a guide with this awesome man. Get out in the boat with him. Uh, he's a big deal now. He's actually on television. I believe you said two uh, world-famous YouTubers also uh, shot some videos <laughs> with you. Yeah, I was I was out with um I was out with Bass Brothers. That that show will be coming out. Uh, that YouTube show will be coming out uh, the middle to end of June. Awesome. Right? Those guys are great, by the way. And um, I was out with uh, Water Warrior, and he lives, I believe, in Germantown, and he fishes uh, Black Hills Lake and a couple of the other uh, uh, reservoirs. And he was out with me last week, and he'll have that a video out by the middle of. Uh, um, uh, the middle of this uh, month. Actually, speaking of the devil, water border. Go, go, Jeff Cinco slash Dinger resigns. So, resign. oh yeah, there he is. So, there he is. There he is. So, What's up, Dave? Huge shout out to Dave for being in the comment section. Yeah, and then, but yeah, uh, uh, Dave, yeah, shoot me a message. Uh, either Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Uh, let's link up definitely, and we and we can talk. And then let's see if that got, I'm making sure I, I don't want to make sure I miss anybody's question. Okay. I think we got all, all. Oh, the big one I have to ask you. So there is a big kayak tournament in two weeks. Do you think now people are allowed to fish the Shenandoah, the Rappahannock and the upper Potomac gun to your head, which rivers do you think are going to produce the most? Where, where on the upper, upper Potomac can you fish Harper's Ferry all the way down to, I think the falls or just before the falls. And then the Shenandoah, basically the main stem of the Doa, and then up the Forks, and then a, a part of the Rappahannock River. Which I, I think the Shenandoah is going to fish real well. You think Shenandoah is going to fish well? Yeah. I was thinking it's probably going to be Shenandoah, Potomac, then Rappahannock, or yeah. something like that. Those if, three, if, yeah. I can't speak for the Rappahannock. Last time I fished in the Rappahannock, I was I was like 12. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the same thing. I, I have not fished the Rappahannock very much. But and I, I remember being um, awesome when I fished it, though. <laughs> I think if you sent three people to three different rivers, I think number one would be Shenandoah. Number two would be the Potomac. And I think the rap would, would probably be third place. I'm thinking, I'm thinking right now. That, um, but that part of the Potomac where you can go out of the confluence of the Shenandoah. I mean, that's a, uh, that's rough water. Mm -hmm. It is. But you that's know? why, you know, that's why they let you fish from like Harper's Ferry all the way down towards past whites, past all that, that main stuff. I mean, if we don't get much rain, you're just going to be fishing on ledges. Like your, your kayak's going to be sitting on rock. Yeah. You know? I, I think honestly, if they open the tournament up and let you fish all the way to dam four and five and the conic jig and stuff, I would have definitely pushed that. I think the Potomac river would be like the undisputed champ. I think so. Oh, yeah. Would win it out of there. But I think because they took that, that's not part of it. I, I, uh, I don't know. I know there's some good fish in the Potomac and it doesn't get fished as much as the Shenandoah. That's the thing. I, I feel like the pressure on the Shenandoah is probably going to push it, push the Potomac up to number one, but I could be wrong. That's why they got to actually, that's why they fish these things. But anyway, all right. Well, sir, it looks like we're all caught up on all the questions right now. So I just want to say thank you, Jeff, for coming back on. I really no appreciate it. And we will, uh, we'll see you next time, but thank you. All right, man. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye. There you have it. Jeff shallow water fishing adventures. It was a real joy to actually have him on the show. That was, that was freaking awesome. Um, I am, I'm hoping to actually get him on every month between now and forever. So we can actually have a nice fishing report on the upper Potomac. And then we're also going to have the same thing with the Shenandoah river, the title I mean, everywhere. I mean, again, this place is the, the, the DMV, like, you know, like I have behind me, oops, sorry. Like I have behind me right here. It's such a big area that if I try to do a fishing report on every single body of water right there, it could take up a month easily of doing content every single day. And I hope we get there that we could do that and bring that kind of information to you. Um, you know, as for this kayak tournament, I'm really excited about it. I don't know. This is why you got to fish it to see where it's going to be one out of. I, I think the Shenandoah is going to get a lot of pressure. I think the upper Potomac could definitely be a dark horse in that. Uh, some housekeeping stuff. We have Chad Hoover. He's going to be on the show, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, he's going to be on the show for another live stream next, uh, this Thursday, actually. I think it's 7 p.m. is when it's done. I really, I should check my computer, actually. 
yeah, 7, 7 p.m. this this Thursday. We're gonna have that live stream as well. Then we also have Rocky, who uh, Rocky uh, won a Upper Potomac River tournament as well. He's gonna be on next week on the show. And then we also have some really fun. I'm not gonna tease them yet, but we had some really fun interviews that we pre-taped that are going to be dropping here shortly. One of them is with the Department of, of Virginia Fish and Game. I know they changed their name a lot, but I can't keep up with it. The other cool interview that I have coming up that we're in talks with is with Brian Roberts. Brian Roberts um, is one of the spokespeople for Fish and Paddle Saltwater Slam Kayak Fishing Tournament. It is one of the biggest kayak tournaments on the East Coast. It's held out of the, the Ocean City, Maryland um, with a fan fantastic payout and so hopefully i'll be getting him on the show before that big event just to kind of talk about it and spread the word about that as well uh the last thing i guess we'll do is talk about my top eights i think we're going to work on the shenandoah upper potomac this time of year and then we'll kind of get out of here i think we got a couple more uh, questions that just came in live i would love to get on on one of these lives yeah sure uh yeah uh dc metro just shoot me a uh shoot me a message and we can kind of get you onto the onto the program the podcast i have no problem about that trying to get as many people on here as possible to really spread spread the information education that they have available to them and be able to send it with the world and we got jl with little seneca lake damn it jl what the hell are you talking about what, what do you mean little cool seneca lake i like you guys can like type full sentences. That'd be amazing. Even though I'm really good at like reading things in between the lines, so to speak. I like, what do you, what do you mean by little Seneca? I don't think we can fish that for this upcoming tournament. If that's what you mean there. Um, but anyway, so my top baits to kind of, kind of dazzle you guys with that I think are going to be big players this weekend. Oh, we already talked about them. So I'm just going to bring this up here, you know, whopper plopper. You know, this is the 60. This is the pip squeak version. If you just want to get bit, this is a fantastic bait to be throwing. Um, the 90, I guess is my general all throw this and it'll work. Stop calling it black Hills. I have no idea what you're talking about. JL Scott, stop calling it black Hills. Okay. No idea what you're talking about, but okay. Number two on my list. Let's go with this right here. This is the Rico walking bait. This is a, I think, a dark horse walking bait compared to like Strike King's offerings that they have. But this is made by Rico. I love the color. Um, the only other color I'd really go with with the walking bait would be a chrome one. But this pearl bone color by Rico is fantastic. Uh, if you want to generate those bigger bites, I still think a walking bait, I'd take over a popper or buzz bait just for trying to get that little bit bigger one. Uh, when it comes to spinner baits, I do like to go with a three eights. Uh, Spot remover color by War Eagle. I just have, I like War Eagle spinner baits. I also like striking spinner baits too. I like to go with that gold one up front. I like to go with chrome in the back or silver in the back. Uh, also, if I'm really on a good bite with this, I'll go with a painted blade. I'll go with a painted white blade. That one really works for me too, just to kind of get a little bit more drive and strikes. You can't really talk about the river without talking about a tube. The only difference I go with a tube is I really like to go with this right here is the tube flipping hook. I like to go with the tube flipping hook so I can actually go up a little bit heavier and tackle. I'll actually use spinning tackle still, but as you guys know from watching, just, just my vibe on what I like to throw, I like to go with heavier tackle when I can. So I'll go with that saltwater rig, which is going to be the, the 30 pound braid to like 18 pound fluorocarbon. I'm going to start with that and then work down from there just because if I do stick a small mouth of a lifetime, I want that heavier gear. Um, and then tube wise, I really do. I have more success with like the darker colors as well. So I would start with that, that, um, black and blue June bug type color first, and then segue to more of the Brown. Now, the next thing that I throw that I really have a lot of success with is a power Ned rig setup. You've heard me talk about this a lot. I have a video that I did about it a year ago. I really need to update that one. And I finally, I think I found the perfect head. This is the Boss um, Jig Head Football Head. It comes in three eighths ounce is the highest one it can come in. You can buy this at Tackle Warehouse and other, other places. What I like about this head is it is very snag proof compared to regular Ned Rig heads. I think that's viably important where I can fish a heavier bait and get it down to the bottom quicker and I can work it through the rocks more efficiently without it getting snagged up. I I don't know about you guys, but I do. I think we all struggle with getting the Ned rig stacked up. And so I really like to go with that football style jig head, a finesse football style jig head. It seems to work the best with it. 
you can fish that on a little bit heavier tackle too, which is awesome. For this, I actually like to throw this on a bait caster setup in that three eighth ounce size. Um, I go with a medium heavy uh, Phoenix rod and I'll go with 16 pound fluorocarbon again so I can work the seams just a little bit quicker. But that just seems to have, I've been successful with that. Um, the last bait on here, and I don't have the main one I want to show you. Oh, let's this one here. Um, is a big swim bait. So I go with a little bit smaller one than this right here, but this is a line through swim bait. The other way that you can do it when I throw big swim baits for smallmouth is I'll throw a Kitek. I'll throw a five inch Kitek or that, that bigger beefier one. But what I like to do is I like to go with the, a line through. And so what I'll do is I'll take a, a hypodermic needle. I'm sorry, a dermic needle, a big needle, and I'll actually thread the line through and then put the treble hook on the bottom. And by doing that, I can slow work that swim bait and still get those smallmouth that swipe at me. The thing I do differently, though, because smallmouth do have a tendency to still swallow the bait, is I get rid of all the barbs on the treble hook. Um, that way, I mean, I still have a decent hookup ratio with that, but I don't risk killing the fish because there are some times where you get one that'll just freaking swallow it. But with the treble hook with the barbs pinched down and removed, they don't have the tendency to, to die. I can still remove that hook that hook pretty easily. Um, and, and again, I would play with the colors. I like the hotter swim bait colors too. I like to have those around in the arsenal as well, just to kind of mix and match, try to get them to draw out for it. But those are the baits that I generally like to use on the river this time of year. Again, let me know in the comment section down below. If I miss something, if there's another bait that you guys actually like to throw. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Please be safe out in the water and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.